Hello Leo, welcome to your December 2022 tarot card and astrology readings. Congratulations, we made it to December. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. My name is Jane, for those of you who are new. I am so grateful to have you here. So as always, these readings are separated into two segments. The first segment is going to be an intuitive tarot card reading, and the second segment is going to be an astrological prediction. So you're more than welcome to watch either segment first. All the timestamps are gonna be found in the description box and the comment thread down below for easy access. You can watch for your sun, moon, or rising sign, although I do recommend watching your rising sign if you are concerned about having accurate house transit information. You can certainly watch for your Venus sign if you're here for love. And if you're interested in joining my Soul Seekers group, we would absolutely love to have you on there. Soul Seekers group is where I post exclusive content specifically geared for members, where we go more in depth on specific transits and we have a little bit more educational information coming out on there as well. So please see the timestamps in the description box and the comment thread down below to jump to each segment of the reading. I hope you guys have an amazing December. You know I love you and I'll see you in just a sec. Hello, Leo. Welcome to your tarot card reading for December 2022. So let's go ahead and take a look here, see what comes through for you. Uh, starting with one card from my intuitive deck just to open up the channel today. So let's see. All right. Um, something is coming to a head or, and, and I mean that in a really good way, Something that has been kind of a convoluted process or there've been a lot of like intricate pieces are starting to come together. And when they do come together, things are really gonna start to blossom for you. A lot of things are gonna start to make sense. You're gonna understand why you needed to go through something or why there was a delay in a certain area and why you weren't able to get what you wanted, it's because of where you're going. I'm feeling like a blossom effect, like something with Leo is gonna start to really blossom. It's like the more and more simple your direction becomes, the more blossoming can occur. I just feel like things have been all over the place and there's been a lot of, um, a lot of areas that have demanded your attention, which means that you weren't really able to fully give all the attention to everything. It was like partial attention to everything. So nothing was really able to, to flourish, but I think it was getting enough, right? Every area was getting enough. So now when these things come together, you can dedicate more and more and more energy to everything, right? Because it's consolidated now. It's not spread out all over the place. It's not a little bit here and a little bit here and a little bit here. It's like, okay, now that we can put everything all in one point of focus or one bucket, I can dump a whole bunch into it. And the more and more energy you give to it, the more it grows. And the more it grows, the more you can put into it. It's like this really positive feedback loop that's just going to grow and grow and grow and grow now. And I think you've been working really hard. I'm getting the energy of a beehive with this little symbol down here. There's been a lot of like worker bee energy. You've been kind of buzzing around and doing a lot of menial tasks. And I think Pluto in Capricorn, you've kind of been, I mean, that's just been kind of the essence of it. You've been buzz, buzz, buzzing all over the place. And it's time for things to like finally go boom and, and just like take off. And I think you're ready for that acceleration. And actually Gemini cancer and now Leo have been kind of getting that message. It's time for these Zodiac signs to experience a substantial acceleration in their efforts. Uh, okay. Their efforts, their relationships, their careers, their bank accounts. All right. All, all areas of life. It's time to experience that acceleration. All right, so starting with the tower. Okay, beautiful. I like the tower a lot this month because it's kind of, it's just, it represents that breaking point. You know, we have to hit that breaking point sometimes in order to make those changes. And with this Uranus North Node conjunction, this is the last month for this Uranus North Node conjunction. 
All right, so we've had it since the end of July, right? It was well in Leo season when this happened. Uranus and North Node came together and they've been together ever since, since Uranus started going retrograde. And Uranus goes direct in January. So December is the last full month of this conjunction. So there is this sense of urgency to make these changes. Like we have to hurry up and consolidate everything. We have to get the plan together. We have to get the strategy, you know, refined in a way that we are, that's like, that's actionable where we can actually do it now and we don't have to think about it on a daily basis. You know, I'm kind of getting a sense that people are sitting down thinking about their lives, thinking about the upcoming new year and saying, where do I really want to be? And what do I need to do today in order to get there? What do I need to do tomorrow? And this kind of approach is going to really shatter the known reality that you're currently experiencing. Because when our behavior changes, right, when you get out of this worker bee energy and you stop doing the menial things and you start dedicating time, energy, and attention to that bigger mission, everything shifts. And this represents a massive shift. So the cards are saying, Leo, you need to be prepared for this big shift. And when you, with, with, freaking Pluto coming over that descendant, right? As it enters into Aquarius in March, like there's no question in my mind that every major area of your life is going to be going through some kind of an overhaul. Oh, beautiful. In the environment, we have the queen of wands. Now I like this environmentally because the queen of wands is so supportive and she's so happy and, and positive and such a cheerleader and she's like one of those people that's like yes of course you can do it queen like go for it you know you're you're beautiful you're gorgeous you're intelligent you're powerful you know this is someone that's gonna affirmation her way into your heart you know and she sees the limitless potential in everybody and she doesn't really i'm not saying she doesn't have her bad days or whatever but generally speaking she can always see the good somehow in some way, shape, or form, she'll always see the good, and she sees the good in you, you know, and there's endless support there, and I think right now, that's what Leo needs, is someone who's just gonna just be there only for positive reinforcement, because this can be a scary venture, you know, when you come out of that worker bee energy, and you stop paying attention to the menial aspects of life, and you start like going big with your mission and your mind and your philosophy and everything kind of tends to expand and you're changing, you need that constant reminder that you're doing the right thing, that what you're doing and how you're evolving is a positive thing. Because sometimes these changes, they, they trigger us a little bit and there's that tendency to want to go backwards. There's that tendency to want to revert back to something that is known and comfortable you know, and the queen of wands is just like, Leo, no, you're not going backwards. You deserve this. You deserve this acceleration. You deserve this ascension. You know, you deserve the good, like don't settle, keep going, keep going, keep going. So if you don't have someone like that in your life that you can lean upon, you may have to do that for yourself, but I really hope you have a best friend or a sibling or even a child who could do that for you a little bit, but probably, you know, more likely a spouse or something, um, who could just be in your corner a hundred percent, you know, and not try to get anything and not try to intervene. They're just someone that wants to see you blossom. So we have the four of swords and the eight of cups, both inverted. And we have the three, a lot of inverted. Okay. Well, we start off with a lot of inversions, which is fine. Nothing wrong with that. I just, I feel like with that four of swords reversed, it goes hand in hand with the tower, which says this is not really a time for like peace of mind. Okay. It's not really a time to be contemplative or meditate. I'm not saying you can't do those things. I mean, that's always a good idea, but I actually think right now the universe is needing you to be more 
actionable, like I was saying, that there, and this has been true for everyone as well, that there are actually things that need to be accomplished and you have to check these off of your to-do lists, okay? And with the Eight of Cups reversed, I know that there is something, I know that it's hard to leave your comfort zone. This acceleration, it's such a great thing in theory. Like winning the lottery is such a great thing in theory. And because it's like, oh, it would solve all my problems, right? This acceleration would solve all your problems. But the transition often is a lot harder because it means you actually need to change, right? In order to keep the lottery winnings, you may, I'm not saying this is true for everyone, but you may need to completely change everything you ever knew about money, right? Like if you were someone that was broke all the time and you never had any savings and you never had any investments going from basically zero to a hundred million, yes, it's life changing. But if you want to keep that hundred million, you're going to have to be smart about it. You know, and so I'm kind of feeling that there, there is resistance to this because it does mean fundamentally changing a lot about your behavior. And by changing behavior, you are in turn changing a lot about your mind and also vice versa. You're being asked to focus on new kinds of things to come up out of this beehive mentality, the worker bee mentality, and come into this more executive level, to be more of a leader in your life, to be more of a you know, delegator in your life. Now, the three of cups in the reversal, with Mars retrograde in the 11th house, and Sagittarius activating your fifth house, so they aspect each other by opposition, there is something going on with your social circles. And there may be people that you surround yourself with that don't really pull you up. You know, they, they anchor you down. And there may be a degree of loyalty there because, I don't know, maybe you've known them for since you were a kid. <laughs> you know, or maybe, like let's say in a workplace, in a workplace environment, let's say that you hire a bunch of people to do, to do certain things, but you have to micromanage them because they don't have that initiate, initiating personality. They don't have that creative component that's required in order for things to flourish. Those people are going to hold you back. I'm kind of feeling deadbeat energy with that three of cups. Are you associating with deadbeats? Are you associating with people that are kind of lumps on a log that, that don't really have the confidence? And I'm not saying they're bad people. They're probably great people. It's just that you've outgrown them in your own path. You have outgrown them and you're being asked to continue outgrowing them. And so that gap is just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And maybe your loyalty to these people may be a struggle of leaving as well. And that may cause a lot of mental disruption because this queen of wands is probably going to say like, you got to leave them. You got to leave them behind and you have to stop worrying about them. They have to figure out how to take care of themselves. You can't keep doling out all of your energy and your time and your mental investments into to people who don't either don't know how or can't or don't want to help themselves. It's time for Leo to really start associating with people who are either at their level or better. And when I say better, what I mean is that they've accomplished already the things that you are hoping to accomplish. Do you see what I'm saying? Like they're not actually better than you. It's just that they've already done it. They've already made the money. They've already built the business. They've already married the love of their life. They've already done these wonderful things, you know, and they're not complaining about their lives. They are productive, efficient, optimistic, progressive people that continue pushing in their lives or yeah, they continue pushing in their lives. They continue pushing in their career. And Leo, if you can associate with people who are better than you, again, I say that in quotes because I don't, they're, they're not better people. They're just 
more accomplished. Um, if you can continue to associate with people like that, they will pull you up. Maybe that's part of the queen of wands too. Instead of you trying to pull everybody else up who doesn't want to be pulled up, you can be the person that's like, please help me up this mountain. I want to be up there. And they'll be like, oh, sure. Because you're not a person who's dragging their feet. You know, you're not a person who's digging their heels, you know, into the ground and being like, I don't want to move. There's no, I mean, that's not the case with you right now. You're not being stubborn. You actually do want the change. And so you start asking universe, God, spirit, please lift me up. Bring me to the people who can help me help myself. So there is a shift. You're going to have to reanalyze the people with whom you're, you're dedicating mental investment, emotional investment. All right. And I'm using that word investment a lot this month, because it's important that you realize that when you think about something, you are investing in it. When you act towards something, you are investing in it. When you give something, you are investing in it. Do you see what I'm saying? And you want to be cognizant of your investments because you've been in this worker bee mentality. You've been, this is Pluto in the sixth, 15 years. It's time for you to come out of it. You know, it's, it's time for you to, to, to have that acceleration because that sixth house is karmic you know, and there's a lot of, and I've, I know I've said this and I've rehashed this month after month after month, but also, especially because you had Saturn in there through 2018, 19, uh, 20. Okay. Those three years, a little bit in 2017. Um, it's thankless. You feel hidden. You feel unseen, underappreciated, undercompensated, you're not getting paid enough. You're not getting promoted. Other people are getting promoted over you. You're not being as effectual as you know you'd want to be. And I think that's, that's hard for Leo that just wants to shine all the time. You know, you were kind of forced into this darker place. Uh, but it, I think in a lot of ways, it helped teach you the value of those things. But that chapter of your life is over. And I see that with the devil reverse and the world reverse. Like this is absolutely coming to a close. And the tower is like, Leo, are you prepared for this change? Because you could experience drastic change in an extraordinarily short period of time. Like literally, like months, like only a few months. Your life could go from zero to a hundred between now and March or between now and this time next year. Okay. So, I mean, the option is there. It just depends on how willing you are to get out of your own way. And I think for you guys with Uranus North Node conjunction in your 10th house, this does have a lot to do with your career. It has a lot to do with your path in life and the mark you wish to make, the legacy you wish to leave behind. I don't even mind the reversal on the world card. I feel like in this instance, it's actually shortening the transition period of time. There is an acceleration to me when I look at this. It's, it's going to happen fast for those who really say, God, spirit, and universe, take me up, like pull me up. I'm tired of being overlooked. I want to be seen. I want to shine. And I, I, I don't want this energy anymore. I don't want to be on the offense all the time or on defense even, although I feel this is more offensive in a way. You know, I don't want to have to defend myself and I don't want to... The thing also, hold on, before I say, I like, this is not about entitlement. This is not, oh, give it to me just because I, I have, you know, I deserve it. You know, it's not like an entitlement thing. You have paid your dues. You have learned what you've needed to learn. 
you know, and it's like, you can tell that you've reached the end of the book and you're ready to graduate. You know, it's like senior year. And it's not just like, you know, middle school to high school it's, or or not, hold on. That's not a good example. It's not like sixth grade to seventh grade where you're still at the same school with all the same people. You know, I don't know how your schools were structured, but for me, it was like grades one through five was one school, six through eight was middle school. And then nine through 12 was high school, right? And then you have college after. So it's not like sixth grade to seventh grade where you stay in middle school. It's more like high school to college where there's a huge difference. The structure is different. You have a lot more freedom. People are different. You know, it's like that kind of thing. A star. Ooh, another tower. I I like it. I do. I always say the tower is the wheel of fortune in disguise. So December is the turning point for you, Leo. Now the star um, kind of mimics this little symbol up here. I'm kind of sensing either a flower or a windmill here. Um, The star this month is really giving me like compass vibes, compass mapping guides you know, like back in the day when they used the stars to navigate the oceans, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, I'm, I'm certainly feeling destination and having a clear path in terms of where it is you're really going. And that's why when I look at with these little symbols here, it feels like a whole bunch of random things lining up things that were all all over the place we have this kind of swirl here and here we have all these lines kind of coming together into one little dot right so it's all these things coming from a lot of different places now all of a sudden lining up and you have this straight line there's no disorder you know it could just be in your mind mentally what you're able to invest in mentally and you're starting to eliminate the unnecessary It's like the fewer things you have to think about, the more likely you are to succeed at the thing you want to succeed in. Um, It's kind of like, I've used this example a few times this month. See, what did I just say? I said the tower is the wheel of fortune in disguise. And look, we have the wheel of fortune directly after. Because I know what I'm talking about. (laughs) You guys need to listen to me. (laughs) Um, What was I saying? Now I just, uh, I was giving myself clout and now I can't remember what I was saying. Um, honestly can't remember my mind went completely blank okay well I guess it doesn't matter I guess it was not important but anyway so oh this is what I was saying (laughs) it's like if you have a business objective and you need to be at the office at work, or if you have something going on with your children and you have to be at home taking care of them or whatever the case is, hiring someone, if you can afford it to like, you know, clean your car or to clean your house or to run some errands for you, or instead of running to the store, maybe you can bring in delivery, right? So minimizing the effort in areas that are not profitable for you, if you can, I'm not telling you to like go broke doing that, but I am just saying, you know, if you don't have time to do your laundry, bring someone in to do your laundry or delegate to somebody, you know, if one of your kids is old enough, like tell them to do it so you can focus on your goal. So you can focus on something that's going to have a payout, streamline your life is the $150 that it's going to cost to have someone come in and, you know, straighten up your living room and clean your kitchen and, you know, whatever, is that $150 more valuable than the amount of money that you may make focusing on something in your business? Do you see what I'm saying? So it's, it's about understanding where the real value is. And by streamlining and minimizing the amount of decisions and the amount of effort that you have to put into something, your life becomes a lot easier. And actually, (laughs) it's going to help to accelerate a lot. Because if, again, I'll just use the house cleaning example, because that's just a, a good one that we all can wrap our head around. You know, if you can come home every day and be in a clean environment and not have to worry about the dishes getting done and not have to worry about, you know, picking up the socks that your 
I dated a guy whose socks were literally everywhere. I honestly, I'm like, how many socks do you have? They're like coming out of the couch cushions. They're behind the garbage can in the kitchen. They're underneath the dining room table. Like what, in what world does someone have so much socks? I have trauma about socks. So anyway, uh, so instead of worrying about that kind of stuff, um, you can just come home and enjoy your life and you can really disconnect and recharge so that tomorrow you can get up and do it again. And that is going to completely revolutionize a lot of things in your life. And look, wheel of fortune is right behind it. It's like, yeah, this is the time for acceleration. There is no doubt in my mind. Leo deserves the growth. Leo deserves the money. They deserve the, the true love. They deserve the marriage. They deserve the incredible friends, you know, all of it. And, and if one area of your life is significantly improving, it's possible that many other areas could improve as well just simply because you become more fulfilled and happier. All right, so let's take a look here. Now, the cards I'm about to pull out are the clarifiers. We talk about all the clarifiers um, in the comprehensive reading. It's another 25 to 30 minutes, so it's like a more detailed, more in-depth look at what's going on. Um, all that information can be found in the description box and the comment thread down below. There are subscription and non-subscription options, so please just make sure that you select the right option that works best for you. So let's go ahead and take a look here at what comes through for Leo. Four of Cups. There is a little bit of that resistance that I'm seeing with that Eight of Cups reversed. Yes. There's skepticism. I know you get skeptical when you, you're like, yeah, but what I've been doing has been kind of working. You're like, do you want it to kind of work or do you want it to really work? Do you want to stay complacent? There's a big difference between contentment and complacency. All right? We don't want to cross that line over into complacency. So what else is going on in the environment for Leo? We have the three of wands. We have the king of coins. Beautiful. And we have the sun. Oh my gosh, I love it. All right, let's take a look at the Four of Swords reversed. What else does Leo need to know here about the Four of Swords reversed? Eight of Coins reversed. Yeah, we're trying to get out of this working so hard place. It's working smart, not hard. Automating things, delegating things, hiring things out, you know, that kind of thing. We have the Eight of Cups in the reversal. The Empress, beautiful. Ace of Wands reversed. And another Sun, and I love that that's connected with the environment. Chariot. Two of Wands and the Devil. A Devil again. Devil reversed, nine of coins, beautiful. Oh, another eight of cups, Did I get another, okay. An emperor, six of swords reversed. The moon, I, just, I feel like Leo is like, I don't want this to be this long drawn out thing, let's just do this already. Right, you're like bracing for impact with that tower, bracing for that breaking point that you you know is the breakthrough moment. Justice, four of wands, just bracing for impact here. Love the lovers, gotta love that. Ooh, a star on top of stars. Come on now. Come on now. <laughs> Three of, oh, three of cups upright. I don't mind the upright. Queen of coins. Six of cups. I love the six of cups. It's been coming out quite a bit this month, and it's giving me really good energy. Oh, I didn't mean to pull out two, but that's fine. King of cups and ten of, ten of wands. Seven of cups. 
the Hermit, the Wheel of Fortune, another Four of Swords reversed. Okay, so this is where we're going to pick up in the comprehensive. So again, please be sure to select the right option for you down below. Thank you all so much. You know, I love and adore you. Have an amazing December and I'll talk to you very, very soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Hello, Leo. Welcome to your December 2022 astrology forecast. Let's go ahead and take a look here. So first and foremost, we are well on our way into Sagittarius season. As of December 1st, we're sitting at nine, the sun rather is sitting at nine degrees of Sagittarius. So for you, this is fifth house activation. It's kind of puts you in a, a little bit of a comfort zone here, right? There's a quality of creativity and self-expression, entertainment, being with people that you love. There's a romantic quality there as well. There's there's a fertility component. Um, it, there's a childlike wonderment. So, you know, if you have children, this is likely going to be a time when you're taking really a lot of pleasure in being with them. If you're wanting to have children, there could be an added degree of fertility here for you as well. Um, and there could be a lot of blessings for you just in, in, in just the regular enjoyment of life here. Um, and of course the sun being in Jupiter ruled Sagittarius, there is that desire to expand in some way. And because there's a lot of self-expression that comes through here, if you have a life or a career or some kind of place in the community that requires you to stand up and to be seen or to take some kind of a I don't want to say full on leadership. It's not really so, but it's to be a voice for something. If you have a, a, something in your life where you need to be a voice, this is likely a great month for you to do a really great job at that. And, and people may find you especially inspiring because of that. I see you having more opportunities to take the spotlight and uh, to really stand out in a unique way uh, that you crave. You know, I know Leo loves to be viewed and perceived as being this one of a kind, individual, unique person. I mean, we all do to some degree, um, but I think that is important for a sun ruled sign to feel that. Um, so this will likely be a high quality month for you, Leo. So let's go ahead and run down some of the, the transits that we'll be experiencing and the dates associated with those transits. First and foremost, December 3rd, we have Neptune going direct. So that last week of November, first week of December is likely to feel, you're going to feel that inertia. Neptune is, um, you know, he's in Pisces, it's in the eighth house. This does have the potential to be highly emotional. Um, it's going to be important for you to allow yourself to emotionally purge. I think we've, we've really had to turn a corner within ourselves regarding all the ways that we've held ourselves back this year. We've had to make a lot of decisions that really challenged us and put us out of our comfort zones and really opened a lot of doors for ourselves. But there may still have been a lot of resistance in some of us, maybe not all of us, but in some of us. And Neptune, when he retrogrades, offers us that opportunity to see the limitlessness of our own human potential. And when he starts to go direct again, we start to see the limitlessness in opportunities out there in the world. And when this turn of events occurs and the shift focus from a deep internal focus to a more external focus, Combined with Jupiter rules Sagittarius season, plus we still have Jupiter in Pisces for the majority of the month, um, there is still this, or this is a great time to be, to really embrace that desire for expansion that you have. Um, whether it is in your career, whether it, I suspect it's career a lot for you, career for the sake of money, most likely. Um, but there could be other areas of your life as well that you are wanting to expand or to improve or to make better in some way, shape or form. Now on December 6th, we have Mercury coming into Capricorn and Mercury, uh, he's going to be doing a retrograde here at the very end of December. So for a lot of December, he'll be going through his pre shadow phase. Now he is going to really force us to focus on our day-to-day -day decisions and how those carry out in our day-to-day -day behaviors. Um, and it's very likely 
that we are going to have to start choosing different behaviors in order for this expansion to occur. We're going to have to say, all right, well, when I wake up in the morning, instead of doing this, I'm going to have to start doing that now. And Saturn tends to kind of give us that sometimes it's like a harshness, but it's the kind of harshness that we really need. It's like, no, I, I'm not going to be relaxed with my rules. Like th this is what I say that I want. And I know that this is what it's going to take to get there. And I don't want to go easy on myself. I don't want to be, you know, negotiating every day and like, oh, well maybe, and maybe I won't go to the gym and maybe I will do that. Like, uh, I don't know. You know, we don't want to be in that wishy washy, non-committal place. And Saturn won't let us do that anyway, right? Capricorn, it's like, no, you're either in or you're out. You can't be in a gray area in Capricorn. So Mercury has to abide by the Saturnian rules, right? Which is like, if you want to succeed in this way, these are the rules you're going to have to follow, you know? And so while we are evolving personally, that evolution is going to kind of carry out into other areas like our workplace and we'll see improvement in all areas. Uh, so that's happening on the sixth. And then on the seventh, we have this full moon happening in Gemini. Now this is the, the next full moon that happened after the big eclipse in Taurus last month. So this full moon, obviously it's bright. And it's illuminating it because it's conjunct with Mars here. So it is illuminating the Martian aspects a little bit. It's kind of like, uh, kind of partnering up with Mars for just a couple of days here. And it's saying, look, Leo, <laughs> especially being in the 11th house here, 11th house is like, we want to go beyond all limits here. And Mars is here to help us with that exact thing. So the moon comes in and says, we need to illuminate this path, right? On the moon card in tarot, there is a legitimate path walking off into the distance into the moonlight. So it is about a path. It's about a map. And Mars is like, I am so friggin' ready to take this action because being in retrograde, he doesn't get to be as aggressive as he normally gets to be. It can be good for him to kind of take a little bit of a rest and whatnot, or go back and redo stuff, but it's not his happiest thing. Uh, so when he gets a little bit of a spotlight this month, he is going to say, okay, let's freaking do this thing. Now all year it's been about, well, let's do the things and you know, but now it's about doing the hard things. Okay. Doing the things is great. You can check things off the list and yes, you can see progress, but eventually you're going to hit this point where you have to make the big change or take the big risk. It's like if you are, you know, an account manager at some firm or something, and you're now officially putting yourself out there, um, and saying, I'm going to go after that big fish client because it's, it's time for me to get to that level, or I'm going to go into that higher or upper echelon group of people. And that's my big fish, if you will. And so it is about taking chances. It's about, um, going bigger than you think you should, especially with Neptune energy and also Jupiter being in his rulership in Pisces as well. It's okay for us to be a little bit delusional right now about our own capacities and to be able to see ourselves maybe a big, bit bigger than we've allowed ourselves in the past. Cause chances are, if we open our mind to our own bigness, it's actually going to be more of a match for reality. Unfortunately, it is more common for people to see themselves as less than what they truly are. So if we can expand that, then you're probably going to be more in tune with reality. Chances are, yes, you do deserve that multi-million dollar client. Yes, you do deserve to be dating that type of person. <laughs> you know, yes, you do deserve fill in the blank here for whatever it is that seems to be bigger than what you think you can get. So that full moon is just a couple of days and, and we get that chance to, to make up our minds that says, yes, this is the direction that we're going to go. And then the next day on December or two days later, rather December 9th, Venus is going to come into Capricorn as well. Now, remember at the beginning of 2022, 
this was the first, you know, that's when she was retrograding in Capricorn up against Pluto. That was a brutal Venus transit. A lot of people really, really struggled with that. I'm not saying everybody did. Some people had wonderful things happen. And if that was you, you're so lucky and you should be so grateful. But a lot of people struggled with that. There were financial issues, relationship issues. Uh, one of my friends almost got a divorce during that time. And then over the course of that transit decided to work through it and they did. Um, but it was a really dark time for some people. Um, and so now Venus comes back first time since the beginning of the year. And she says, all right, Capricorn, I'm back. I am here and I made it. And maybe I didn't think I could, maybe you didn't think I could, but I did. She's proud. She's graceful. She's elegant. She comes through with a sense of honor and it, it kind of is like, okay, like if we can go through that, then we can go through anything. Like we did it and we can do it. So the belief in oneself, even though Capricorn can be a harsher sign, it's like if you, it's like getting the approval of that. Like if you're like a, at a university and there's that one professor that everybody hates because his standards are so high and no one passes the class, it's like getting approval and getting a really good grade from that professor, you know? And so there is that sense of like, oh, wow, I must be special, right? I must be really good at it. I knew I was, I just had to prove it to myself. Now, the next time Venus goes retrograde in 2023, by the way, is going to be in Leo. So you're going to be the host of that in Leo season. It's happening on July 22nd. So I think this Venus transit is going to be especially relevant for you because you're like the next time. Okay. And this is where she did it last time. So it's especially relevant for Leo. Um, and then we don't really have anything substantial until the 20th, which is when Jupiter comes back into Aries. This is very exciting for Leo because when Jupiter comes through Aries again, and I know that it's already was in there in 2022, it dipped in and then it retrograded back into Pisces and then it came back into Aries, but it was basically retrograde most of the time. Now, Jupiter is going to start moving very quickly. He's only going to be in Aries for a few months. Um, he officially enters Taurus in May of 2023. So as he moves quickly through Aries, there, I think that first part of the year, January, February, March, April, it's going to like, you're going to go far quickly during that transit because the ninth house is of course an expansive house as well. And it expands you in all areas. There's a spiritual component here. There's, um, religious, you know, philosophical, educational, anything that takes your mind into a bigger, higher place. Uh, and there's also material gain here that happens big time. The thing I love about ninth house energy is that it doesn't discern between spiritual and material. It's just expansion and it happens in every possible way on every possible vibrational playing field. It doesn't matter, but this is what you're being called up for. And because this is happening in the ninth house, it's especially potent for you in a fire sign, which is in a trine with a lot of your planets here too, as well. The one thing I would caution Leo on because trines are so positive and so free flowing that sometimes you don't give it the oomph that you really need. So I'm telling you, if something is going well, if something is operating like a well-oiled machine, keep giving it attention. Don't just expect it to keep going like that. You have to continue to invest in the areas that are working really, really well, because the more and more you focus on your cash cows, I guess we could call them whatever. Again, I'm, that's like a business term, but you get the idea the things that bring you in the most, the more you can focus on those, the more you're going to bring in. But if you're so worried about these little piddly things that aren't working and you say, okay, well that's functioning. Okay. So I'm going to put focus here. Like, like that's like, I don't know. It's just, it just seems like you're missing out on a big opportunity there. This is like 80, 20 principle type stuff. You know, like this may be 20% of what you're doing and then 80% may be a big old mess, but that's, what's working. This is why a big theme that is all, I get another theme, a lot of themes coming out through December is delegate. 
If you have 80% of your life that's kind of chaotic and not very well organized or that needs attention or whatever, hire people, ask people, right? Ask your spouses to take care of something. Ask your children if they're grown old enough to take care of something, right? Ask friends, ask siblings, ask parents, whatever the case is, like ask them to help you out with something so that you can focus on the stuff that's really, really working and bringing you greater growth. That's how we start to balloon everything up. Okay. So that's Jupiter through Aries on the 20th. And then on the 21st, the sun comes into Capricorn. Now remember, this is the, su the, the winter solstice here in the Northern hemisphere, which means the nighttime is the longest. The daytime is the shortest, but this is also the time when the night starts getting shorter and the day starts getting longer. So there's at least that <laughs> there's at least a little bit of hope when the sun comes in. Remember Mercury is going to be slowing down because he'll be doing a retrograde on the 29th. Um, he comes in and then there's like the next couple of days on the 23rd, there's a new moon in Capricorn and Chiron goes direct. I'm telling you that like, I would, I would honestly think that like the 20th, 21st, 22nd, 23rd, that time it's gonna, when Chiron is basically standing still, not moving at all. Chiron being a, an asteroid of pain and wounding and trauma. And for you, this is all the pain and wounding and trauma that you have either in spirituality or in material gain or in learning or in thinking that you're smart or, you know, whatever pain you have around ninth house themes, you're going to really feel that. And I actually sometimes like Chiron and Neptune for me are kind of the hardest ones, at least like Uranus and Pluto and Saturn, they kind of like make your external world all screwed up. But Chiron and Neptune are so internal. It's like we can't really see and it can be very challenging to navigate on our own. Um, so it could be emotional because stuff is surfacing. And because the thing, the, the thing is, is that I know you want to do a good job. I know you want to succeed. I know you want to do well. I know you want to progress. Like I know that you want all of these things. And so there could be an accentuation, especially after the heightened intensity of this full moon conjunct Mars, as that moon wanes, right? December 7th, we have that moon and then it starts to wane. And then this new moon is in its detriment, right? It's not strong here in Capricorn and it's dark, right? A new moon is like, you can't see it. So there's not a lot of light to really navigate. The sun is also, uh, weakened in Saturn ruled energies as well. Um, technically it's in detriment in Aquarius, but Saturn ruled Capricorn is also tough. Um, and so there could be a lot of confusion near the end of the month. And this is when real commitment and real dedication, like you, you gotta be all in. And there are going to be a lot of people that pump the brakes on all this movement. And they're going to pull back and they'll be like, oh, I'm not ready. Oh, I'm too scared. Oh, I'm afraid. Oh, it's not going to work. Oh, I, and then if something doesn't go right and it goes wrong and they'll take that as validation or evidence, like, oh, see, I never should have done it. And then they're just going to go right back to all the way it was before. And then 2023 is going to be tough. Okay. Because 2023 Two plus two plus three. It's a, it's a number seven year. Now in Vedic astrology, traditional it's ruled by K2 or the South node in modern it's associated with Neptune. Okay. So there's that kind of connection there. It's a spiritual year and there's a lot of depth and a lot of richness that comes. There are a lot of lessons that come through here as well. And if you're not prepared and you're not committed, this is a time when people get lost. Uh, the last time we were in a year number seven was 2014. So think back to 2014, right? 
20, yeah, I'm like, did I do the math right? 2014, um, nine years ago, right? Um, I know for me, 20 to 14, just personally, I know you guys don't care, but I was going through a Saturn return in Scorpio, also against my moon and my south node, and it was a whole big deal. And I lost my business and my boyfriend, and I moved into my sister's house, and all I had was like a mattress on the floor and my little computer on the floor and my cat, and like that was all I had. And that was because I wasn't listening to what my soul was wanting. I didn't leave when I wanted to leave. I didn't stay empowered. I didn't stay strong. I just gave up. And it's like, if you give up, you're just going to like go deeper and deeper and deeper. So the commitment is so important. The commitment to your growth, the commitment to your success, the commitment to your passion, it's going to, it's what's going to carry you through. And then year number eight could be, you know, a totally different story. So just kind of keep all that in mind. And then of course, December 29th, we initiate that Mercury retrograde, but we'll talk a little bit more about that next month. Okay. All right, Leo, I'm going to leave you there. Thank you so much. You guys know I love and adore you. Have an amazing month and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.